Praise the Lord, church. Welcome once again to receive uh, the message from the Lord. I want to uh, give thanks to the Lord for allowing us to be here another day. Um, today, uh, the word is going to be brought by our pastor, John Benavides, our pastor with us. Praise the Lord, church, once again. I want to welcome you today. I want to welcome you to the um, service that we are about to have here. And I want to thank you for your uh, cooperations, for your, um, for your um, support and everything. You know, I want to tell you, church, I want to really let you know that I appreciate all you are doing, church, to help us in this time of need, in this time of crisis. Church, you have responded awesomely. Really, you have responded awesomely. I know that um, we haven't been in the temple. We haven't been here. I know that it's sometimes it's kind of hard, uh, but right now this is the way it is. They have us. They have us at shutdown mode. Maybe, maybe it won't be too long now before we return. But as long as we are not here and we continue to do this, I want to appreciate your efforts and your support. And this goes out to all. This goes out to all. Uh, visitors, you that hear us, you that support us, you that send in contributions. <clears throat> it's important for us because the church has to be maintained. Uh, the, the work has to keep on going. And you have been part of this all along. But uh, those of you from the church, the membership of this body, I want to appreciate your, uh, your continued support, your continued contribution your tithings, your offerings, which means so much for us. Because like I said, we need to continue to keep up this temple. Uh, the, uh, the bills don't stop coming, as you know. And, 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 uh, and you have done your part, and I appreciate it. it. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel good. And I want to tell you thank you. Uh, if you're visiting and you want to help us, well, you will see the, the addresses and phone number, where to go to send contributions and support. And we appreciate it. And, and, and the, I know that the Lord will continue to bless you. And God will recompense because what you sow is what you reap. And I also want to tell you that let us continue to pray for the church in general. <clears throat> for me, God has been so good to me and my wife. God has kept me uh, very, very well uh, health-wise. I have nothing to complain about, you know, and I thank the Lord. Uh, I'm not Superman, but I am the servant of the Lord, and I thank God. And I, can, I covered your prayers. I covered your prayers. And uh, don't forget, let us continue to pray. Stay united in the prayer. Stay united in the uh, fasting. Stay united. Have family altar. Get your children together. Get your homes together. Get your family and pray. And tell them to pray for the church. And tell them to pray for your neighbors. And tell them to pray for the brothers and the other children. We need prayer. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is what keeps us going right now. And I tell you that we need it more than ever. This is a time that prayer needs to be reaching the throne of God. And this is the church. The church of the living God, the body. So your prayers are great and powerful in this time. And I, I want to come to you once again and ask you, let us pray for the needs around the globe, around the, the world, for those that are con continuing to battle. <clears throat> you know, church, I'll tell you this, but today, today, church, I heard of a church. I heard of an apostolic church today that 98% of their people were sick. That's, that's pretty bad. Um, so I believe that there are needs out there. We have been blessed. Thank you, Jesus. We have been blessed. God has kept his hand upon us. But there are other churches that are not as fortunate, and, and we need to remember them. So I come before you right now and ask you, join me, and let's come before the Lord in prayer. God, you are our God. You are our Savior. You are our provider. Lord, you have been so faithful 
in answering prayer. You have been so faithful in keeping your promise with us. And I appreciate you, Lord. I want to say thank you to you. I have realized that we have been blessed tremendously. I have realized that there are churches that are really struggling, congregations that are suffering. But Lord, I come to you uh, in, in, in such a compassionate spirit that I ask you that you put your hand upon these people, this congregation, this pastor, and pastors that are suffering and struggling with these viruses and disease. I ask you, Lord, that you put your hand upon them, God. I know that uh, things seem like they're clearing and everything, but there's still some that are still facing the struggle and battling. And I trust in you, Lord. I trust in you, God. And I ask you that you continue to give wisdom to the people that are working in, in battling these, these viruses and these needs, the doctors, the, the scientists, the, the nurses, uh, our leaders, industries, uh, pharmacists, all this world that is trying to combat and bring a, a, a solution to a lot of this. Lord, I ask you that you help, help us. Hear the cry that we put before you. Answer us, and I know you will, God. Uh, help our churches, help our families, our children, keep your hand upon them. Let your angel encamp around this congregation here in Hollister, Lord. I appreciate it. I thank you for our leaders, for the president, for, for the uh, uh, spiritual leaders, my supervisors, my bishops and, and pastors. I ask you that you put your hand upon them, my wife at home, my children, my grandchildren. I thank you, Lord, because you are so good and you are so awesome. The visitors that are listening right now, those that are hearing the prayer, Lord, I ask you that you put your hand upon them. They, they are hearing this prayer, and I'm asking you that you touch them, their hearts, their needs, whatever they're seeking, whatever they're asking. Lord, let them get to know you. Let them know that you are real, that you are alive. Jesus, in your name, we are thanking you for everything you do for us. We are thanking you for your kindness, for your goodness, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are thanking you, God. To you be honor and to you be glory, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Church, welcome once again. Today, I will be going to the book of Romans, and we will be getting our word of the Lord from here. I will be going to the first chapter of the book of Romans, and I will be going to verse 16. It is a verse well known, heard of by many, many times. So uh, I will read it and I will speak from here today. And I feel that, I feel that we need to hear a little bit more about it, okay? So, uh, Chapter 1 of the book of Romans, verse 16, word of the Lord says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Amen. Up to there. And I want to talk to you about this. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth. This is the Apostle Paul. This is the Apostle Paul talking to the church. Talking to the people that know God. Talking to the people that serve God. Talking to the people that have given their hearts to the Lord. And I want to bring this word not only so much for the church, but those that are listening, those that are hearing, those that maybe have not tasted of this gospel, those that have not felt of this gospel, those that are trying to understand more of this gospel. You know, this is, this is so big and so important because Paul was a religious man, but he was trying to find or trying to serve religion in his own way, not realizing that there is a true word of God, a true power. And I will entitle this message today, Don't Go Deaf to the Gospel of the Lord Jesus. Don't go deaf to the Gospel now. 
What is this gospel? What is it? I'll tell you what it is. The gospel of Christ is something that we need to hear today. It starts with two words, good news. The gospel is good news. Good news. Good news of what? Good news of God himself. The gospel of Christ is good news of peace and peace with God. Peace with the creator. Peace with the almighty. Jesus Christ gives us this gospel through his blood. He paid for this gospel. It's, it's genuine and it's, and it's foolproof. It's here. It, it was bought through the blood that was shed at the cross. If you find yourself wondering, is it or isn't it? Yes or no? Real or not real? Well, the only way you're going to find out is to give it a try yourself. You need to get personal with it. You need to question it with your own heart. You need to find out what it can really do. This word is real. This gospel is real. It is the word that is needed today. It needs to be heard. It needs to be tasted. It needs to be felt. When we were outside, we would talk about sin and all. But here it is now. This message is being brought to us by a man that he himself was wondering. He didn't believe in it. He didn't want it. He didn't trust it. He didn't, he didn't actually uh, wanted to accept it. He didn't. But here it is now. The messenger, the same man that didn't want it. The same man that didn't trust it. The same man that had nothing to do with it. The same man that accused him of false and not true. He himself now has found it. And he himself found that it is full of grace. Not only grace, it is full of truth. This is what he found. He, this is what he found in the gospel. The good news. The good news of peace. The good news of grace. The good news of truth. He found that, he found that, hey, this, this is real. This is real. The law that was given before with many symbols of terror, because that's the way the law was. It was hard. It was hard. But here it comes now, grace. Grace has come in with an, an agonizing heart, with, an, with a sacrificing heart, with a suffering heart. With all the love of the creator himself. The gospel is here. And this gospel embraces the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus as the savior of the world. And here it is. This gospel, Paul now understands. You know, Paul tried to stop this gospel. Paul tried to intercept this gospel. He tried to, to put an end to this gospel. Because he didn't think it was real. He thought it was phony. He thought it wasn't right. But once this gospel got set into motion, this gospel has been unstoppable up to now. Up to now, church. This gospel is unstoppable. Even for some of us, we try to not accept it. We try not to believe in it. We try to say, ha. Hey, a couple of months from now, you go back right to the square one again. But I'll tell you, the barriers that we put up were knocked down and broken. The barriers that we said, oh, I'll stop it here. The barriers were not enough and it could not be stopped. And it will not be stopped. It will not be stopped. This gospel, I'll tell you right now, everyone that has found it, Everyone that has felt it, everyone that has got a taste of it, has found out that this gospel is the answer. This is the answer that we're looking for today. This is the answer to all our needs. Oh my goodness. This is the gospel. Believe this gospel and apply it to your life. And it is like gold to the soul. I tell you the, I tell you the truth. This gospel is the greatest powerful agent that man can find for the goodness of his soul.
It's called salvation. Hmm. Let me tell you what Paul estimated of this gospel. He right away begins by saying, hey, I'm not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed. For he remembers the words of Jesus when Jesus called him. He remembers when he said, Paul, what's happening? What are you doing? And he says, who are you, Lord? He says, I am Christ, whom you're trying to kill, whom you're trying to destroy. I am Christ. Paul found out what the gospel was. And when he found out, it changed his heart. It changed his soul and it changed his attitude. And it has, it has changed mine. And it has changed everyone that has accepted this gospel. The attitude changed. The, God, the heart changes. The thinking changes. For Paul, he says, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed to believe in this gospel. I am not ashamed. And he said it with all sincerity. And he said it with an open heart. I'll tell you what this gospel does. It opens your heart. It brings out fight in you. It brings out fight to receive it. It brings out fight to keep it. It brings out fight to keep it going. Hmm. Paul said, I am not afraid to confess it. When he said, I am not ashamed, he said, I confess. He was determined to confess. He was determined to get to know God better. He said, I'm not ashamed. I want to know God even more. He was not ashamed. He was not afraid. He was ready to, to hear more of the Lord, to preach and go wherever God wanted. You know what happened with him? When he said, I'm confessing it. I am not ashamed. I'm not afraid to confess it. He got influenced by this gospel. And this gospel can influence the heart. It can influence the soul. It can influence the mind. This is one of the greatest influences that can happen to a human being. For real. For real. He was not ashamed to suffer for it. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not afraid to confess it. And, not, I'm not, and I am not ashamed to suffer for it. I am, I am sure he was ready to die for it. Suffering for the name of Jesus was part of, it, of his heritage. And he proved it on many occasions. And God was rewarding him. He even took him one day when he was uh, knocked down and fell unconscious. He took him to the third heaven to show him the wonders and the results and the recompenses of believing and confessing and, 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 and willing to suffer for this gospel. I'll tell you, church, church, we need to be infected. We need to be infected by this gospel. We need to be infected. We need to be influenced, influenced by this gospel. You know why? Because it brings courage. And it brings confidence. It brings sparks of fire from heaven. That's Holy Ghost fire. And it brings this spark for us to glorify God. Paul shows me and tells me. He schools me. He schools me in this. He says, I am not ashamed of it, for it is the power of God. It is the going forth of the mighty word of him who created the heavens and the earth. And by the same word, we are here today. It is through this word, it is through this word that was given by the omnipotent God himself, which works in us, which brings love and mercy to us. This is Paul. This is him shouting, shouting to the world where he turned, wherever he went. This was something special. I'll tell you, once the motion got going, it didn't stop. It kept going. Now Paul yells out, this is fact. This is fact. This is truth. 
Jesus paid the price. That was his words. Jesus paid the price. It is the power of God unto salvation. The same power that created all is now directed through the gospel to the salvation of the needy. Salvation has been a more struggle for many in this time. But you know what? It is, it is surely there is power enough here to meet all the needs of all the needy. It is the power for all those who believe it. Everyone that believes comes within the scope of the saving power. Please heed to this word being put out today. The word of news from heaven. The freeness and graciousness of this gospel is the glory of it. Yet for this very cause, many are ashamed of it because it rebukes their pride. It ignores their self-righteousness. This gospel is for us today. This gospel is for us to show, to receive it. And once you receive it, this gospel will give fruit in your home, for your family, in your walk, in, in, your, in your life. God, with this gospel, will bring such a, such a, a, a power. God commands love to come over you, to come over your home. To come over your family. And he proved this from the beginning. Paul says. Paul himself says. This is why he took it. Man. While I was yet a sinner. While I was yet a sinner. Jesus Christ died for me. I wasn't saved yet. But yet. I was still unsafe. In the world. Lost. And Jesus still came. And paid the price for me. This gospel. This gospel he brought. Is a power. To continue to walk. To make it without limits. Without limits. Jesus died for us. To bring healing to this heart. While I was yet a sinner. He brought healing. Goodness into my heart. Now here I am. Paul. Paul has schooled me. Paul has given me. He's still schooling me. Now I can find Paul. Wow. You give me inspiration. You bring inspiration. Well, this gospel is a gospel that brings inspiration. It brings, it brings the fight out. This is no time to quit. This is no time to give up. This is no time to throw the towel in. Okay, we're not coming to the temple. This is no time to quit. This is a time to, to bring the fight out. Sooner or later, we're coming back. Sooner or later, we're going to be in the church. Sooner or later, we're going to be singing songs in the house of God. We're going to be worshiping God. And we're going to be he's seeing miracles and healings in the house of God. This is a time to have, a, have inspiration in our homes, with our families, with our churches. Bring it to the community. Bring it to the nation, church. It is a time to worship the Lord. The gospel is real. And it has come upon this church. It came upon us a long time ago. Well, let it, let it, let it come out with that fight. Let it come out with that influence. Let it come out with that Holy Ghost. Let it come out with a demonstration of prayer and worship and song. Come on, church. Get harness. Get harness with this gospel, with this power. Make it part of your daily walk. Make it part of your daily conversation. I'm going to close with this now, church. There's a Bible portion that says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written within. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Whithersoever thou goest. Book of Joshua. Chapter 1, 8 and 9. Church. Gospel is alive. Gospel is real. We need some good news. 
The gospel brings good news to you and to your family. Jesus loves you. All of you that hear us, the Lord loves you too. God bless you. The Lord be with you. Until next time. Brother Ruben with us. Praise the Lord, church. That was an awesome message, an awesome message that touched my heart. I want to encourage everyone to receive the message, receive what God has for you. I want to encourage you to continue to worship the Lord in your homes, with your families. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord with your, with your time. Honor the Lord with your worship, your praise to Him. There in your house, you have a, a church, your temple. Edify it, feed it with the Word of God, with prayer, with worshiping the Lord. Teach your family. We leave you with this awesome message. May God bless all of you. May God bless all the everybody that's visiting, that's watching for the first or second or third time. Welcome. Take the message. Meditate on it. You will receive a blessing in the name of Jesus.